Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson here, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast. This time we're in the Basics of Web Design textbook series, and we're talking about Chapter 4. Chapter 4 is an introduction to cascading style sheets. So it's extremely important that you go very slowly and thoroughly through this material. We're back to the basic book design where the author includes these little hands-on practice exercises for each major lesson. And I highly recommend that you do those exercises. Early reading the chapter and doing these little hands-on exercises as you're reading the material is really how you're going to learn this material best. So in chapter four, you're going to start your CSS knowledge by applying some styles, some text colors and background colors to various elements on the web page. If you're using the Pacific Trails project, your final web page looks like this. But at this point in time, because now we're entering into the world of joining two languages together, I think it's critical that we review the key terminology for each. So if we're in the HTML file, we must know two key words, element and attribute. If you're using Notepad++ or whatever text editor you're using, the elements will be color coded in a particular color. Notepad++, they're in blue. It's very easy to see the elements. And as I click on the elements, if it's a paired element that has an opening and a closing tag, just title or body or header, we will see the opening and the closing tag light up in that pink background. Attributes are in red. Attributes further describe the element. So for example, in chapter four, you'll learn how to link out to an external style sheet with the link element. It's not a paired element, it's a single element, oftentimes called a void or empty element because there's just one tag here, but it has two different attributes, the rel relationship and the href, the reference to the file. Some elements do not have attributes, but some elements such as link or meta or HTML or the a anchor hyperlink element must have attributes in order for them to work correctly. You can't have a hyperlink, for example, without knowing what file you're linking to. So in HTML, we must have those two terms down solid, element and attribute, because when we move to CSS, the instructions are going to ask you to style various elements with certain attributes. And if you don't know those words, then it becomes extremely difficult to complete the CSS. On the CSS side, we have three key terms we must learn. The selector, which selects what we're about ready to style. The property, that is what we're styling, the background color in this case, followed by the property value. In this case, we're making the background color all Fs, which is full red, green, blue light, which is white in the hexadecimal color system. And the entire attribute and its value is called a declaration. So now we have five key terms that you must learn by the end of chapter four for your foundation to be solid. And just like an HTML, which ignores extra white space, we can go ahead and indent this code however we want. Readability, I like to indent the entire information inside the body, one level. I like to clearly sing out the wireframe tags using indentation. So we use extra white space tabs or spaces to clarify our HTML. We're going to do the same thing in CSS. I insist in my classes that we have only one declaration per line so that we can clearly see each property and its value. I even like to start all the properties at the same level. And I like to put these curly braces on their own lines because then I can clearly see if the declaration ends in a semicolon or not. Now, the last declaration in a list doesn't need a semicolon technically, but it's good to put that in there so that if I wanted to do another declaration, I'm already ready to go and I haven't forgotten that semicolon. So for my classes, I like to see that closing curly brace on its own line. I think it just makes it easier to read. Uh, when there's only one declaration, it's not quite so important. It's a good habit to code in a way that makes your style sheet as easy to read as possible. 
will help you enormously down the road at down on errors, which improves your productivity. Now, there are other things about Chapter 4, just like all the chapters that are very important for you to learn. For example, you'll learn about embedded styles, inline styles, and external styles, hence the term cascading style sheets. But I've already got YouTubes on those items, and I think that's pretty well explained in the book. One item that I do want to emphasize about Chapter 4, though, is CSS validation. Just like you must always validate your HTML, the CSS validator is also your best friend. So every file, every HTML and every CSS file needs to be validated. That will help you find your errors, which in turn make your pages work better. You can either upload your files before you publish them, or you can just copy in your CSS directly into the validator and check it. And when you see the green, you're happy because that means there are no errors. I also must mention that I think it's really important that we know commit syntax in all of our languages. In CSS, it's slash, star, star, slash. Comments are just a necessary part of every language to document your files, as well as to comment out certain things to test your pages without a particular piece of code. For example, if I wondered what this rule did to the header section, I could merely comment it out instead of erasing it, and then I can come back to that declaration very easily once I test what that does. So I'll save both my files and load this up into my browser, and I can see that my header now has no background color. My text has been made white. The text is still there. In my CSS, I have made the text for my header white, so when I eliminate that background color rule and I've got white on white, it looks like I have no header. And I do have a header. I do have the text there. It's just white on white, so I cannot see it. When I drag through that text, I see there's something there. It's important to know comment syntax in all your languages, both for documentation purposes and also to temporarily eliminate statements and test your code. I'm going to save and refresh again, and now I've got that nice background color on the header. Finally, I want to point out that if you're using the Pacific Trails or the exercises at the end of the book, I do want to point out that the B element, the bold, is a formatting issue. We want to not do styling and positioning in our HTML. We want to separate all of our styling and positioning issues into our CSS. So if you're wondering why that bold tag is sitting there when that seems like a styling issue, that's a great question to have in your mind. Later, we will take that out in favor of CSS. The same is true for the I, italic, and small elements. Those are intended to style the content. In the next chapter or two, you do delete those elements. But again, in my opinion, they should not have been put in the HTML in the first place. Thank you for letting me give you this overview of Chapter 4. And remember, come back to my playlist and get into some specific YouTubes if you want to dive further into one of these topics. Thank you.